Hello everyone, today's exciting topic is endogenous retroviruses. I'm sure you're very excited. The first thing I want to say about EDVs is when I first heard about the argument itself, I was actually really quite impressed. It actually sounded quite cogent and to be honest, compared to the other arguments for evolution, I thought it really seemed to hold water quite well. If you haven't heard uh, the argument before, a brief summary is that certain viruses, when they go wrong, can implant a section of DNA into a host without actually killing the host. And then this can, in certain circumstances, be passed on to next generation, next generation. And so since we have similar EDV patterns, um, certain ones, only certain strains, to, for example, chimps and other monkeys and that sort of thing, what evolutionists say is, look, we can see that at some point an organism, say a chimpanzee, was infected with an EDV, and this has been passed down through our generations, which is why we've got an EDV in the same place that they have, and that proves the lineage and ancestry. This sounds great to begin with, it, it, it makes sense if an EDV was planted by a virus into our DNA or into an, an organism's DNA and it was in the right place, it would be passed down from generation to generation and then if we did evolve into humans then from chimps we'd be able to see that we are related because they have it and so would we. When you look into it however, it doesn't actually come across as watertight as it you'd like it to if you're an evolutionist. If you're a creationist you can see it falls apart. And the reason why is when they're looking to see where an EDV is, where this signature is, they'll look for certain things like GAG, POL and so on and so, so forth. They're uh, sections of DNA which make certain proteins which are associated for example with HIV. Where they spot these sections of DNA, they say, right, this is where a virus has tried to, or has altered the DNA. This, we can tell, is an EDV. But there's a problem right there. The problem is that EDVs are actually naturally occurring, which sounds odd, but makes perfect sense in a way. And I'll explain this using reference to HIV. Now, I don't know if you know anything about HIV, AIDS, you know, the really serious disease, but the reason it kills you is because it stops your immune system from working and then other things kill you basically. So it doesn't kill you itself, but it brings down your defenses which allow other things to kill you. The thing is, we have that sort of DNA in us naturally occurring. It's actually designed, it's been put in there specifically, it's designed in there. And without it, mammals simply wouldn't exist. And without it, none of us would be here, there wouldn't be anyone watching my video because none of you would have been born in the first place. You see, when you're born, or pre-birth, when you're conceived, and the embryo beds in the mother's womb, the natural instinct of the human body would be to attack the embryo because it thinks it's an invading force, it's a virus or it's a bacterium and it would kill the child off instantly and the human race would now be able to reproduce. Thankfully however we have some genetics which is very very similar to HIV in that it suppresses the mother's immune system in that particular area so as soon as the embryo beds what will happen is uh, pretty much a very similar piece of DNA to the HIV virus will be activated in that area and it will prevent the mother's immune system from attacking the embryo and therefore allow the child to grow in the womb and eventually give birth to the child. So essentially without this section of DNA which looks remarkably similar and has remarkably similar effects to a HIV virus then we wouldn't all, we'd never exist in the first place. As a result of this it's perfectly logical that we would have these uh, EDVs in common with other creatures, particularly any mammals, you know, things like chimpanzees, other monkeys, because all mammals have this DNA in them. Every single mammal which doesn't produce uh, its offspring by eggs, which there are some extreme cases where they do, but every single mammal which gives birth to live young has this DNA. So it would be no surprise 
for what they think is an EDV to be found in both humans and chimps and monkeys and all the rest of it. It's no surprise, it's what you'd be expected, what would be expected. So sure, we're going to have EDVs in common with other mammals. That doesn't prove any sort of ancestry or lineage. All that proves is simply that we're all mammals and we all require the same type of DNA in order to allow us to reproduce. There's no surprise in it. It's what should be expected. In fact, I saw one quote which said we wouldn't be able to evolve without this EDV in the first place. That's a we being mammals. And somehow they're surprised when EDVs overlap between humans and monkeys. And somehow that's meant to prove something. Don't know where they get it from.